So uh, we want to talk about the Judicial Conduct Board, uh, kind of sketch out why you think that they are not a good investigative body, although I think the evidence is, is fairly clear why they're not, but uh, tell me why you think they're not a good... Well, I I had some very in-depth dealings uh, with the Judicial Conduct Board. I filed a formal complaint with uh, the J- JCB against uh, Judge Capolini. Uh, specifically because of his uh, personal connections with attorney Arthur Pacone. They're best friends, uh, which they've admitted openly. Um, Godparents to each other's children were former law partners together in two law firms. I mean, attorney Pacone should not be hearing, or at that time, Judge Capolini's retired now, but he should not have been hearing cases in front of Judge Capolini, period. Any case, not just my case, any case. Was that brought up in court? Yes, there was, was a conflict. Absolutely, of and positively. people, in what was the, how was this defended? Judge Capolini um, sat on the bench and said, I can assure everyone involved that uh, I will not let my personal relationship with Attorney Pacone influence any decision that I need to make from the bench period end of story and that just didn't give me any comfort at all because especially when i saw them having lunch together during our break uh in some of my testimony at the uptown restaurant with two of my attorneys present that didn't instill a lot of confidence that no. you had much of a chance in this no. thing so you take all this evidence to the jcb and uh, what happened i filed a formal complaint um and i i met many many times with the chief investigator a guy by the name of ken Fennell. And um, he, uh, he said, yeah, he said, you got some real issues here. He said, uh, I'm, gonna con- I have, uh, I'm going to authorize a formal investigation, which he did, or wh- whoever does that. Mm-hmm. He took it to wherever he needed to. And he came up and interviewed some people up here and um, uh, said flat out, he said, uh, I hope this judge doesn't have any plans for his big fat pension. That's a quote, because he's going down. Absolutely. Okay. Where's he going? Down to Florida? Yeah. I mean, that, that didn't work out either. No, did that it? didn't work out either. Turns out Judge Capolini was actually a member of the JCB. He was a, there, there were eight members on the panel at that time, and he was one of the judges uh, that was a member. I didn't know it at the time. I found did out. Did anyone know it at the time? It was a public record? Yeah, it's public record. Okay. I, uh, you know, but, but if anything, he should just have been, you know, set to the side and, and let's, let's have this investigation continue. Um, I got, and it, this was all in the book, by the way. Uh, uh, I got to the point where uh, I, at any moment I was expecting the judge to be brought up on, um, on charges by the JCB and, and a, a, a hearing to be held. And instead, I got a, a two sentence letter in the mail that uh, my uh, complaint had been investigated and that it had no merit and it was dismissed. Uh, I, I obviously was very upset. I called Mr. Fennell many, many times. He never returned my call. So the last message I left him was, uh, if you don't return my call, I'm coming to Harrisburg. So he didn't return my call, so I went to Harrisburg. And I sat in his office for the better part of a day. And while he was held up in his office, he couldn't even go to the men's room uh, because he, he would see me. And he stayed in his office till about 3 o'clock that afternoon and finally finally saw me. And he told me, and this is in my book, and I will take a polygraph test. Um, He told me flat out after about an hour and a half of me badgering him as to what happened, um, he told me that if he were pushed into a corner, he would lie about what he was about to tell me. But he told me that it was fixed. He told me flat out it was fixed. He said that the judge had contacted the, the members of the board, told them that he was about to retire, and that they could better spend their efforts and their money from their budget pursuing other activities as he was going to be out of the picture anyway. And they agreed. Incredible. This is Jim from Hunlock Creek who wants to join us on WILK. Hi, Jim. Hi, Sue, and good morning, Larry. Good morning. I remember you so well. It was great working for you. And I can say one thing... uh, you are one of the most intelligent people to ever come out of this valley. <laughs> I don't know about that, but I, I appreciate that. Jim, well, I, I guess that's why you kept going. <laughs> I'm still battling my battle there, and I found out a lot more. 
And I can tell you, you are interviewing one of the best gentlemen that you'll ever have on your show. Well, I, we've had him on before, and he's uh, been very gracious to come back, Jim. And uh, his story is extremely compelling to me. It makes me uh, question and, and wonder how deep the roots of corruption go in Luzerne County. Right to the top, I would say Rico. And Jim, you you nailed it, buddy. Um, you are you are correct. We were talking when we were off air about Rico, and how far this thing really does go. Yes, sir. I lost I lost my wife over this. Uh, you remember about my injury and all. That case was sealed, and I'm still battling it. And yes, I've had many threats which I think you know I'm too stupid to uh, be a coward. <laughs> <laughs> I suffer from the same affliction, so... <laughs> yes, sir, and uh, I hope your whole family's well, and I'll let some other listeners call, but I did leave my phone numbers there, but it's in the book. Okay. In Hunlock Creek. I appreciate that, you know that, the Jim. last name, Larry. And God bless, and stay safe, and David, and your other brother... And I, I really and truly mean that. Thank you, you very much, Jim. you pay off all your creditors. That When you did have to claim bankruptcy, you did pay off all your creditors in full. Well, I tried. I don't know if we got all of them, but we, we did the best we could. Thanks, Jim. We have to go to the Bloomberg Market Minute on WILK at 1049, so we'll talk about that. Uh, and uh, we also have another caller who wants to talk about uh, judicial misconduct, which seems to be a hot topic in northeastern Pennsylvania. And uh, we will have Larry Hohal on till the top of the hour. If anybody else wants to uh, discuss this with him before he departs, you are more than welcome to do so at 883-0098, The book is Luzerne County Railroad. Larry will be at Barnes & Noble in the Arena Hub Plaza on Sunday at uh, 2 p.m. for a book signing. And uh, you can also tell him your tale of woe if you wish at that signing you're listening on 910 in scranton 980 wilkesbury 1300 hazelton and 103.1 fm it is 1055 at wilk larry hohall is our guest today talking about his book luzerne county railroad jerry from german wants in on that hi jer hi how are you wonderful how are you larry how are you very good thank you you know you touched on something before before we get into the judicial thing you touched on something before you said that these guys are going to leave the area and everything's going to go right back to the way it was before? Unfortunately, I think that's probably correct. I think you're correct, too. I think it's a generational thing that, that, that people in this area just tolerate, and they just seem to pass it on from generation to generation just to be quiet and tolerate it. Yeah, and the cycle needs to be broken, obviously. Absolutely, and I'm hoping that, you know, we, we see a lot of newer people moving into the area. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not so good, but... I'm kind of hoping that those people will be the ones that will, you know, turn this thing around. It's not up to them. It's up. Uh, it's up to the natives of the area. We 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 really need um, to think of our children, our grandchildren, and the future of this area. I mean, I I got to the point where um, I, I was yelling from the rooftops about it so much that I I finally just uh, said I I need to go get some sunshine and move out of here. And, 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 <laughs> I don't blame you for that, but I, I, I think you're correct. And 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 back to the judicial conduct board. That's kind of like isn't that kind of like a doctor watching a doctor? You know, you go you'll go to a doctor's office and say, look, I had a doctor six months ago and he did this and. The doctor will look at it and say, "Oh boy, that's that's terrible." But they'll never say anything bad about the doctor. It's 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 far worse than that. Is it? Uh, yeah, these are uh, for the most part they are politically appointed, and, and I hate to use the word, but it's the most accurate one. They're hacks. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, I agree with that. Political now, I, I, I happen to know uh, one member of the JCB that was not one of those hacks, and when he tried, he was an attorney. A uh, very, very successful, high-profile Pennsylvania attorney, and he was appointed by Governor Thornburg at the time. And uh, he went in there and was just appalled by what he was seeing, and he he tried to expose it. I'm sure the glad handing and the you know the the phone calls from this one to this one to this one to take care of this problem goes on all the time. Yeah, Jerry, I'm going to let you go. Uh, thanks a lot, and, and it was uh, nice to hear from the bird there in the background too. Uh, Richard from Cranberry Township, welcome to WILK. Oh, hi, Larry. I'm a raving fan of Larry's, and uh, unfortunately, I'm going through at a later time in my life the same thing Larry did with the JCB. I, I filed formal complaints on a, a judge over here in western Pennsylvania. Butler County is maybe worse than Luzerne County for corruption, and uh, I just got 
They never even talked to my attorney, talked to me, told me they investigated my case, which they never did. And they just shut it down with a two-sentence paragraph. And, and these convicts have financially raped me so far for uh, about $16.7 million, I figure, in damages to my estate. And it cost me great losses in four years of my time, and they're still continuing to do it. I've had four corrupt judges on my case and uh someone really you know larry we really have to get that federal grand jury to investigate these criminals well I'm, gl I'm glad you brought that up um i've been in contact with a number of um grassroots grassroots organizations here in pennsylvania uh and we are in discussions right now of all of the groups or most of the groups combining on a single effort, not necessarily combining their organizations because they all have different agendas. Uh, some want to reform the Constitution. Others want, you know, whatever direction they happen to be going in. Uh, but if we can get enough of them together, we already have some um, uh, legislators that have promised they will they will jump on board if we orchestrate this correctly. Richard, uh, best of luck. That sounds awful. Uh, Larry, stick around for one more segment.